Hi friends, today is going to be another recently read ARCs wrap up. It's been a pretty long hiatus. I think this might be the first actual sit down video I've done in February. Everything we've done up until now has been like a live show. It's possible. Um, we're gonna talk about, I think four or five arcs that I read December, January, and uh, just do a wrap up on those. The first of which is When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. I gave this a 2.25 out of five stars. Um, this book follows our main character Millie who goes over this like Mama Mia type situation where she's always grown up with her father but never known who her mother is and she finds her father's live journal from like 2005-ish and so she like finds the women that he was dating in order to figure out which one is her mom. This was one of my most anticipated reads of last year and it was one of my biggest disappointments of the year. I really did not like the main character even after her character grows. She was just a hot dang mess and kind of a bully and I just I didn't really ever connect with her at any point throughout the story. I didn't necessarily not enjoy the plot because I liked the idea of like what they were doing but the other things that were kind of tied into it kind of your subplots weren't really working well for me. The love interest the, from the page that you meet him you know that he's the love interest and I just didn't buy it. It didn't really work for me either. A lot of it was just very unrealistic and just didn't make me happy. I read probably like the first quarter and the last quarter and then the middle of the book I kind of just like skimmed through a little bit to get some context um, because I was not having a good time and I didn't want to completely DNF it um, because it was something that I had been anticipating so much. So I did end up giving it like a 3.25 but I knocked a full star off because I skim read the middle part of the book. I will read more from Emma in the future because I have enjoyed her books previously. Just this one didn't just didn't sit right with me. I then read The Hawthorne School by Sylvie Perry. I gave this a two out of five stars. This book is about a mother who gets her son into this very prestigious um, private school because he doesn't quite learn like other children do and it's supposed to be like a suspenseful thriller um, of like, just like weird things that are happening in the world. I'm gonna give you a like non-spoiler review and then we're gonna go into spoilers because had I had a spoiler review available to me, I would have DNF'd this book. There were some things that I wanted to figure out, so I looked up a review for spoilers to kind of figure out if I was right and where things were going, and had I known that I was right, I would not have finished the book. So I want to give you the opportunity to have that. Um, so I will be going through some spoilers here in a minute, but also I did leave I'll, I have a very big review of this on Goodreads as well, which will always, as always, is linked down below. For me, this book was not suspenseful at all. Uh, the main character was real dumb. Like there were so many red flags of things that were happening and just completely outlandish and not believable, but also in a world where you expect it to be suspenseful and to be a thriller. And yet there's like nothing, like you see it happening and you're like, oh, I bet xyz or I bet this or I bet that and everything that you're thinking is absolutely right and so there was never really that buildup of suspense and I just did not really love any of the characters at all and so there wasn't really much to hold on to here. I'm going to go into spoilers. When you see this book cover come down you can come back. One of the immediate biggest red flags for me was that this is like this super prestigious school where they have a three year waiting list for students to get in. And this woman just shows up on a whim and wants to walk through because she wants to see what her kid is missing and ends up getting him signed up for the school like no questions asked. That's weird to me. Um, they asked for her his birth certificate and never returned it. They asked for like she had to sign all this different paperwork, she had to do all these things. Well they were she was basically signing over her child to these people. Now because it wasn't legally done in a court system it wasn't legally binding but she still was signing over her child to these people and like none of the students had parents. There was I think two students on three. Three students in the entire school system that had parents. No one else had parents weird weird I mean she talks every day about how like why is there never anybody there dropping off their kids or picking up their kids 
Why is that? Because they don't have any fucking parents because the school has taken in all of their parents. And what's happened to everybody's parents? A lot of them are dead. Claudia, you know, told them about how um, her child's father was out of the picture and he, you know, had left and they didn't really know anything about him. Well, her friend Maggie hunts him down and sends him to the school and then that same day he goes missing and they never hear from him again. That wasn't a red flag. Like, I understand the concept of like he had left her before so she figured he had just left again but like he spent a whole day with you and your son and was like no really I mean it I'm changing like I'm doing like it's not like he had a full history of this happening like it happened one time so when he comes back and he's like I'll take you guys out to dinner and then he just vanishes that's not weird to you at all when he like the second he walked off the page I went that guy is 1000% dead and he were and one of my biggest gripes with this main character is like she trusts Maggie and then lo and behold Maggie is actually on the side of the school she's a bad guy and then after having trusted Maggie she trusts the only other parent that she knows that's there which are the gardeners and then they double cross her as well really really it is like so basically like the whole thing is the school finds these kids who are special and they basically they find kids that have very few parents or people who they can take in and brainwash um kids who are unruly who don't learn well because they can put them in this atmosphere where they don't have to learn they just have to brainwash them into believing into this guy that owns the school so they get these kids in they have the parents sign over the rights to them if the parents fight it then they like drug them out of their mind everybody's drugged they have this green stuff i don't even remember what it's called but it's like this green plant that they all eat and drink and they put it into literally everything it's to make you docile to make you happy to make you not question things um so they give you this drug and they like some people get a higher concentration of it and those are the people that end up working for the school so some of the kids parents work at the school um but they're like zombies and then the guy who runs the school is like making all of these kids and he gets these parents there and these believers there by telling them that at some point the world's gonna end and he's gonna take all of their children underground so that he can protect them and then when the threat is over they're gonna come back up from underground and then they can have their children back i don't know what the fuck that guy is on but he needs help basically uh claudia trust the gardeners the gardeners cro double cross her lock her in a cell she's gonna be buried and killed the next day lo and behold one of like the comatose druggo people come and rescue her and they like l get all the children out of the building lock all of the followers into the chapel and then burn it to the ground that's what happens okay moving on the next arc that we're going to talk about is Rules for Vampires by Alex Fox. I give this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. This was a mid-grade and basically revolves around a young vampire who is trying to make her first kill so that she can become a full-fledged vampire and you just kind of learn about her life and the things going on in this world. I enjoyed the main character. I thought she was kind of cute and fun to follow but I didn't really like any of the other characters. Um, the plot was a bit meandering and it didn't really do a whole lot throughout this plot of this book. Like, there wasn't much plot to the plot. The world building was okay but not my favorite and overall I think the story was cute but wasn't the best. I do think that if you were a mid-grade reader you would probably enjoy it more than I did because I'm an adult but cute. Not the best thing I ever read. Then I have Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This was also one of my favorite books that I was expecting to really love in 2022 and I DNF'd this at 20%. I was not enjoying the characters or the plot and lucky me I found spoiler reviews um, so I read those and was very glad that I was ready to bounce. Um, read some spoiler reviews was not the kind of story that I was here for and I'm glad that I jumped ship if you will. And the last arc that we're going to talk about today is If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. I gave that a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book follows, well it follows a whole boy band called Saturday and there are four members of the band and one of the members is gay and kind of has feelings for one of the other members of the band 
and it is about their romance and all of the trials and tribulations they have to go through um, being in the public eye as far as like a boy band in the public eye. It's very daunting. I loved these characters. The four guys from Saturday were so fucking like amazingly well done. I really enjoyed them. I feel like they were very flushed out, very like fully fledged characters. I think the way the guys are being treated by management and by the fans is very true to what we have heard um, over the past like 10 or 15 years how boy bands were treated in the early 2000s and even some of the more recent boy bands I think things were very realistic in, in that aspect. I enjoyed the plot but I loved the romance. I think the romance was really well done and I agree on that with all of Sophie's books. I really enjoy her books. This book did kind of have the one problem that I always find with um, longer books written by duos is that especially when one is writing one perspective and one is writing the other's perspective it can be a little long and the middle gets a bit soggy. So the beginning is really good, the end is really good, the middle is okay and that's why it has that 3.75 rating. Um, I feel like it could have been a little shorter or there could have been some shoring up done in the middle. But overall a really really good book. I did really enjoy it. That is it for the five recently read arcs. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about these books please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week sometimes. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I'll see you guys next time. Bye.